sharing two of Topaz Labs' really great products, and that is Topaz Sharpen AI and Topaz Mask AI. I'm going to take the image on the right and transform it into the image on the left. You're going to see me do it all right here. It's a really fast and quick, easy edit with these products. So, hey, without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm starting out here in Lightroom. I'm going to open up the basic panel. And as you can see here, I've made a few adjustments like the white balance adjustments, a little bit of exposure adjustments, not too much. Pull my highlights back shadows. I shot this at ISO 500. Uh, let's go into detail. You notice I have my sharpening is shut off. Uh, no noise reduction, just a little bit of color noise reduction. It's just the way I like to do it. Uh, and under lens corrections, I have my remove chromatic aberrations checked and enable profile corrections checked. And that's basically it. And now I'm just going to right click on the image, click edit in. And now we're going to go to Photoshop uh, 2020 and I'll start my Photoshop editing process. I'm going to duplicate my background layer. And let's go ahead and zoom into the image. As you can see this image is really out of focus here. You know, I did not hit the focus on this image. So I'm going to have to use a uh, sharpen AI to take care of that problem. So I've duplicated my background layer. Uh, I'm going to rename it to sharpen AI. And then I'll just go up to filter and launch Topaz sharpen AI and we'll get started. And I really love the way uh, Sharpen AI has been developing as a product. It has some really cool features here. Right now, in the auto mode here, it'll detect which uh, problem it thinks this image has. And it says, hey, it's got a stabilized problem. I'm going to check auto, and it'll give me some auto settings. And I find the auto settings work really well inside of uh, Sharpen AI. But look at the difference there. Image on the left is the original. The image on the right is the preview. With the sharpening added, I'm at 100% zoom in. Now let's take a look at the uh, out of focus areas because you can see that's where the noise is living. This image was shot at ISO 500, so Sharpen AI is more than capable of removing the noise. And it's doing a nice job. Let's just look at the center one more time, make sure we're happy, because we can make our own adjustments if we need to. I'm happy. I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. And it's going to go ahead and uh, add the sharpening to my image and send me right back into Photoshop. Remember, with low ISO images, Sharpen AI does a really great job of getting rid of noise. And this image, was, like I said, was ISO 500. But look at the focus. Here's the original image without Sharpen AI, and here it is with Sharpen AI. What an amazing uh, sharpening it does. There's the before, and again, here is the after. Now, that is really impressive to me. So, next, we're ready to start the uh, blurring of the background, and we're going to use Mask AI for that. Now, I don't even have to duplicate the background layer. All we need to do is come up to Filter, uh, Topaz Labs, find Mask AI. We'll go ahead and launch Mask AI, and we will get started with the blurring of the background. I love this program. It has some really unique and cool features in it. I'm starting out with my compute brush going all around the petal edges of my flower, which is the star of the show, the center flower. And the blue areas are the areas that uh, Mask AI has to do all the hard calculations. All right, and I'm going to make my brush a little smaller here and go around the center of the flower here. I never know these technical names of the flowers, I'm sorry. And now I'm going to get a uh, compute bucket, the blue bucket, and fill in here. And now I'm going to get a cut bucket and get rid of the cut area. And then click Compute Mask. Remember, Mask AI uses a tri map. Red for cut. Blue is compute. Green is keep. Now it starts out with, every, with your whole image on a keep state. And then you can go ahead from there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click background because I want to blur the background on this image here. Okay, so I'm going to give it a little extra blur, more than I would think I want because it kind of helps me to see which areas that uh, Mask AI has missed. Now, I'm just going to zoom in and use my hand tool and move this around. I'm going to go ahead and shut the tri map off on the, uh, on the uh, original image on the left and just compare and see what's missing. So you can see I have a spot missing there. I'm just using my uh, uh, keep brush and... Just going to give that a little paint right there and look how easy that fixes itself up. Now, here's a little area that it's missed. Just a little bit of painting there and it's so simple and easy. Now, you can paint on either the uh, original side, the left side of the screen or on the right side. It doesn't really matter. 
And I think you'll see me painting on the uh, left side here in a sec. So let's just uh, take a close look here. See, there's a little spot right there. I'm just going to give it a little tap, and it's going to clean that right up. And uh, anything else I've missed here, let's just really examine it. You know, take your time when you're doing this and get all the areas. See, here's a little area it's missed right here. And then it has missed a little area right here. So it's really quick. It's fast. I love Mask AI, and it keeps getting better and better and better, in my humble opinion. So Let's go ahead and zoom out now. Let's get the uh, blur amount looking the way we want it because I think I have too much blur there. So I'm just going to pull the strength to the left and ease off on that blur a little bit. I really like this image in that center bloom, but I think blurring this background out a little more is really going to add to the overall effect with that nice, creamy, out of focus bokeh background. Now, I think I'm going to lighten up the exposure a little bit just to lighten it up. Now, I love this fact about Mask AI that we can work with the foregrounds and backgrounds, and we have all these controls of, you know, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, temperatures. It's really cool, and saturation. Okay, so I think the exposure looks good there. Now, let's move to the foreground. Now, on the foreground, what I think I might do is give the flower a little more saturation, just so my viewer really takes a close look at my flower because that's what I want them to be really looking at. Now, I don't want to overdo the saturation, but I just want to give it some extra saturation. And now uh, let's open up the shadows because the center of the flower seems like it. the shadows inside of the center could be opened up a little bit. So I'm going to open those up. And then now I'm going to give my flower just a little bit more exposure. I don't want to overdo it here, but I just want to give it a little because your viewers will be drawn to the lighter parts of the image. And I think right around there is looking pretty good. I think I'm happy with the foreground. And uh, now let's go back to the background and see what we want to do here. I'm um, just kind of looking around, trying to figure out what I want to do. And I think what I need to do is pull back the saturation ever so slightly on the background. Not much, just a little bit. Again, I want your attention to be drawn to the main in-focus flower. And I'm thinking, yeah, like a minus 0 0.05 should do the trick there. Let's take a zoom in here and make sure we're happy with everything. Make sure... I didn't miss anything. We can really examine it. Yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. I think I'm happy. Now we'll just click apply and we're going to give be given a choice. We can either send it back as a composite or a transparent background. I'm going to send it back as a composite and that'll put the blur on it. Now here we are back in Photoshop. Here it is the original without the blurred background, and here it is with the blurred background. What do you think? I think it makes a big difference. Now the center of the flower seems a little too red to me, so I'm going to get a uh, hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to use this target tool right here and just click on a red area and you'll notice it picked reds. I'm just going to drag my mouse to the left and just ease off on that red saturation just a little bit. I think it's going to help it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the before. Just look in the center of the flower. See how red it was and now here's the after. It just looks better, I think. Uh, here's the original where we've come from. We've come from this, and we went to this, all with the help of Topaz Sharpen AI and Topaz Mask AI. I'm really happy. Well, there it is. That was a fast, quick, easy edit, uh, starting out in Lightroom, doing some basic adjustments, and then moving into Photoshop doing some sharpening inside of Photoshop using the great plugin Topaz Sharpen AI. And then I sent it into Topaz Mask AI, uh, blurred out the background, and then made adjustments on the foreground and the background of the flower right inside of Mask AI, which is a real time saver. I mean, I, I specialize in flower photography and Mask AI is a wonderful tool for working with flower images. Um, hey, if you have any comments on that or questions about anything here, please let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to have a dialogue with you. Um, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not a subscriber of my channel yet, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about